In 2014, Brisbane G20, there was an uproar. Citizens were, uh, pardon my language, they were just pissed off. The taxpayers bailed out the banking system and all the billionaires kept their jobs. So Jamie Dimon, he's still collecting bonuses, Goldman Sachs, all of them. None of them failed. They, they would have failed, mm -hmm. but for the fact that they were all bailed out. But the everyday Americans are like, you know, unemployment's 9%. I lost my job. I lost my, my 401k is down 50%, et cetera. So there was a political reaction to that. So in Brisbane, 2014, they came up with the, not the bailout theory, but the bail-in theory. And right. bail-in means that um, if a bank fails, the investors, the, you know, the, the stockholders, the bondholders, the depositors, they have to basically pay off the creditors. They have to pay off the depositors. Um, and only, only when there's nothing left with the government, maybe, maybe chip in. So, so what, uh, and put, and they put the world on notice. The, um, the insured amount in Europe is a hundred thousand euros. U.S. is $250,000, but the whole world was on notice. That's all we cover over that. You're on your own. What the FDIC did on Friday was actually consistent with what they all said they were going to do in 2014. It was a bail in. And if you had a billion dollar deposit, you're going to contribute to the rescue. Within 48 hours, they did a 180 degree turn. They completely blew away the $250,000 insurance limit. They said, we're, we're guaranteeing all the deposits, multi-billion dollar deposits. By the way, a dirty little secret about what happened at the White House. I said that, you know, the, the, the Silicon Valley billionaires were crying about all these little startups and all this stuff. The truth is a lot of what Silicon Valley bank was financing was um green technology but no. they were they were in the white house sweet spot by saying green and they they were that was actually what they were financing everyone thinks oh somebody's working on an app they weren't apps they were there was like battery power so um so they get bailed out at the same time on sunday night now we're talking uh march uh, march 12th they closed another bank, which was Signature Bank. Something about S, you know, Silvergate, Silicon, Signature, all the S's were going down. Now, Signature Bank was another interesting case, which was Barney Frank was on the board of Signature. And if that mm -hmm. name rings a bell, just think of Dodd Frank. Dodd Frank, 2010, thousand page legislation. I know uh, I met I met Barney, I know Chris Dodd very well. Um, that was supposed to solve all the problems of the 2008, 2009 financial crisis, et cetera. Here, the author of the bailout legislation is on the board of the bank and his bank gets shut down. Well, like, what's up with that? Uh, they bought government bonds. Uh, and when interest rates went up from, you know, 10 year note, uh, treasury note yield to maturity went from like you know one and three quarters to like four all those bonds lost 80 percent of the value that's what happens on long duration bonds you know bond math is simple rates up price down vice versa while the rates were up the price was down so they were underwater and insolvent and they got shut down so barney frank's out whining the next day he's like hey yeah but that's true of every bank in the country. There's not a bank out there that didn't load up on treasury bonds at one and three quarters. They're all underwater, they're all in yeah. And by the way, the Fed announced a facility, but basically what they said was, if you're a member bank and you have treasury securities that are where the mark to market value is below par. So you paid 10 million, but they're only worth 8 million. And that was hmm. the case across the board. So they get oh, trillion, what? trillion dollars or more of bonds that were in that category. You can deliver them to us and we will lend you for one year the face value. So you're putting up 80 cents of collateral, but you're getting a hundred cent loan. I said, I got a 15 year old car. Will you lend me the what I paid for it? Because it's a lot more than it's worth now. Um, <laughs> but that's what they did. So now I'm now my head's spinning. I'm like, well, I, mean, I get all this stuff, but I'm like, oh, so you just guaranteed every deposit in the banking system without limit and you just guaranteed every treasury bond at par value without limit. What's left? Like, what else do you have in your bag of tricks? Because you don't have it. There's nothing else you can do. Go back to 2008, they guaranteed every money market fund in the country. So, uh, but here's Barney Frank whining. Hey, yeah. yeah, my bank was in trouble, but so was every bank in the country. Why did you whack me and give all these guys a pass? Well, the answer is Signature Bank was another crypto bank. It had a portal called Signet. And Signet was a way, was a portal to the crypto world. And that's why they whacked it. Notice they whacked two crypto banks. Everyone's asking Janet Yellen, I was like, wait a second, what just happened? You guaranteed every deposit in the banking system. And she's like, well, no, not really. It's only if you're systemically important. And you're like, okay, could you please define systemically important so we can tell? Because we're getting our money out of all the banks that are not. 
Uh, and the truth is you can't because the system is so densely interconnected. And this is why this is why they say financial contagion. I mean, it's it's a metaphor, but the, the actually the mathematics of a viral spread, we just went through a pandemic, but this has been true, you know, for as long as it's been studied. The mathematics of viral contagion are identical to the mathematics of financial contagion. The the equations are the same, um, you know, the way it spreads. And uh, of course, Janet Yellen can't define systemically important, number one, they, they try, but they can't. Number two, I don't care how small you are. If you're a small bank and there's a run, the guy across the street, he's getting his money out of that bank. And again, it's like COVID, it's like it just keeps going uh, yep. until the system collapses, which means by definition, just, just by the dynamics, there's no such thing as a bank that's not systemically important because they're all connected. Even the little banks are borrowing from the big banks, et cetera. So Jenna Yellen hemmed and hawed and didn't have a good answer. She never does. She's not that bright. Um, and so so there we are. So the Fed has guaranteed every bond at par value, even if you're worth eight, you know, 20% less. And the FDIC has guaranteed every deposit. And Janet Yellen can't give you a good definition of what's covered and what isn't. Okay. Now a week goes by. What's on tap for the next weekend? Again, Friday night press release, uh, shotgun wedding, Credit Suisse and UBS. Now you're talking to big guys. You know, these are two of the biggest, oldest banks in the world. I think Credit Suisse have been around since the 1870s, maybe, and I'm not sure about UBS, but they were the two biggest banks in Switzerland. So yep. Credit Suisse fails and they get taken over by UBS. Um, okay. And now everyone's like, oh, what's next? Who's next? You know, and there's, there's a list. I'll, I'll go through it in a minute what factors come into play how can i think about whether a bank is likely to fail or not regardless of whether they're, they're getting bailed out uh, and there are two metrics that are, are really good one is look at the ratio of uninsured deposits to total deposits if that number is more than 30 percent you're a sitting duck and in silicon valley's case it was 97 percent. they were 97 percent uninsured so a little local bank that's got, I'll say 30% uh, uninsured and 70% insured, they're very unlikely to have a bank run. Most of those customers are like, hey, I'm covered, I'm good. I got 100,000 in the bank, all good. But when you're up the, you know, north of 30, certainly north of 50, 70, 80, 90, um, you're, you're an accident waiting to happen. Yeah. The other metric is total assets. So um, there, there really are, too big to fail banks it doesn't mean they can't fail but it means they're 100 percent guaranteed to get bailed out and that list is well known so who's too big to fail like you can put your money in they can screw up really badly and you're not going to get hurt as a depositor jp morgan chase wells fargo goldman you know the usual suspects goldman sachs mm. us bank corp capital one td state street city b of a morgan stanley pnc financial bank of new york mellon truest financial and uh, bmo harris bmo uh, uh harris they're the they're the giants okay right i'm not saying they can't fail i'm saying that they will be the, there'll be a, a safety net put under them and no one's going to lose anything except right maybe stockholders but not not bondholders not depositors, depositors. 